So we've now downloaded the application onto our machine and of course opened that application. And we're first presented with what is referred to as the canvas view for Power BI. So this is the area at which we're gonna be able to add the visuals to ultimately create our dashboard. And you can see there's various elements to this. Uh, so you've got obviously the top of the page referred to as the ribbon, which for you who are familiar with the Microsoft applications, so Power BI and Excel, Hopefully this sort of layout with the tabs and obviously the icons in that ribbon is gonna be a familiar one for you when it comes to navigating. The next part, like I say, is the canvas. So this is the, the page bit of our report from where we'll be adding our visuals. And you can see we've got numerous panes down the right hand side here, which I don't want to go into too much detail at this point, obviously not to confuse, but we'll obviously step through them as they become applicable to us for our various stages. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, get some data into our report so that we can actually you know, start building our visuals and have the data to populate those visuals. To do so, we're going to simply go into Get Data. And you can see, as by default, we've got the first what, eight or nine uh, common data sources. So what Microsoft believes to be the most common data sources uh, probably we want to see. So for the purpose of this, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom and click onto more. And from here, you can see the extensive list of all of our data connections that we can connect to from Power BI. So obviously to help organize this, you've got a few categories down the left. You can obviously use the search box, but for us, we're gonna simply be using text CSV to get started. So this is a file extension that you're probably gonna to have to use um, many times when using Power BI from my personal experience, uh, but it also serves as a great introductory for pulling through your first uh, chunks of data. So once you've selected text CSV, all you need to do is click on to connect, and you can see it's taken us uh, to File Explorer. And fortunately for me, it's obviously taken me to the exact folder that I require, but if I just jump up a folder level, uh, and just to help demonstrate this, so we'd obviously selected the CSV data type. So where it helps is if we go into this folder what says XLXS, which contains just that file extension for um, Microsoft Excel, you can see it presents to us no available files. And that's because Power BI is obviously looking for only CSV files. So if we go to Power BI and then back into CSV, you can see indeed it's identified there is one CSV file in there, and it's gonna be able to obviously let us select and import that file. So Probably obvious information for you there, but I guess just a little bit of filtering that Power BI applies to your files, uh, just to make sure that you don't get into the confusion of pulling in the wrong file type. Once the file you've been selected, navigate down and click on to open. And what Power BI is now gonna do, and hopefully you can see, yep, there it is now on the screen, is it's given us a preview of the contents of that file. So being a CSV, there's only gonna be one sheet in there, uh, obviously CSV files don't have multiple uh, sheets or tabs in Excel. So we can see yeah, CSV, and this is uh, an example. So I think we've got like the 20, first 20 rows here, uh, just as an example, so we can see the file content. So you can of course navigate horizontally, horizontally if I can say that, and vertically just to ensure that it is indeed the contents that you require. You could go into transform data here, but we'll step into that one later. However, we're gonna simply click on to load, and what Power BI will do now is continue that connection progress, uh, or process, should I say, and quicker than I can explain it, it's now opened up our data pane on the right-hand side here and given us a table called tasks. If we expand that, we can now see all of the available fields to us which are within that file. And usefully as well, before we even get to the point of making any visuals, if we go over the far left-hand side, so you can see at the moment we're on the report view. So this is where the actual report will be um, built. But let's explore this second option here for table view. So if we go into table view, and then we go into our tasks, you can see it's now allowing us to see all of that data within this file. So obviously this comes uh, very much in handy again, as down the line when we may need to do some fact checking or just you know remind ourselves of what data is in there, we can do that from this view by just simply navigating to our applicable table when we have more than one available to us. And of course, we can use all of these filters uh, as you expect to uh, obviously filter and reduce the data as we require.
So at this point, you should hopefully now be able to get data from a CSV file. And of course, I'd recommend you now having a try of that just to familiarize yourself with those steps we just went over. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.